Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Finding time to record something while I'm being very busy with work because, oh god, everything is falling apart around me. Anyway, what's not falling apart is that we know when the Valentine's Day event is going to start for the NA, so I'm going to be talking about it today. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. It helps me a whole bunch. Now, let's get right into it and look at some stuff. Here we go. I totally wasn't adjusting the music. So it does start on the 13th. We're going to have to look on the JP side because I don't think it's been updated on the wiki yet. So, ah, yay, 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 I think it's somewhere in 2021. Here we go. Here we go. I forgot we were in February. Oh, my God. <clears throat> As you can see here, I have this. I forgot that the Valentine started in the between of Holy Grail Front War. That's pretty crazy, but to be fair, I guess there's not much actually going on in the Holy Grail once you finish the Holy Grail, but whatever. Valentine's Day 2021. This is the event. It's the biggest grind event in the history of the world. Uh, especially if you do not have a lot of the Valentine's Day chocolates for a lot of your units. Basically, you're able to get chocolates, and then you're able to kind of just, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? CE list. Yeah, you get chocolates, and you get a whole bunch of, like, scenes with your female units, and then I think you also get it for the male. Um, they're also all voiced, and they're really cool. For this year, there's some brand new ones all the way at the bottom here. Let me see, what are the new ones? Oh my god, there's so many. So yeah, it's always a nice little fun event. I think there's also a new MASH one coming out too. Uh, every single new unit has them. So <laughs> every year there's at least a reason to always do it. Unless you somehow went an entire year without any new unit, including the free units. Which would you'd have to actually try to not get any unit, including the free unit, if you wanted to go an entire year without any new units, I think. But either way, yeah, it's a very simple uh, event structure idea. But it's also very long. As you can see here, it's every single female servant, and then it's every single male servant in the game. Every single last one of them. It sure is a long-ass list, and it's a lot to go through. Uh, the event itself is like a points related as you get more points you get more chocolates if you only if you want to get something from a very specific unit I think there's a Selectable chocolate. I think it's this one. It's usually the hmm. They usually say which one it is. I think it this one there it is oh, The Valentine's Day This one I think this is the one that usually allows you to select a unit to get their uh, their scene if you want to have a specific favorite and you want to get to them quickly as possible and yeah there's a lot of them here and like I said I already have a lot of my Valentine's Day ones so I don't typically what I, what ends up happening to me is that I end up skipping a lot of them <laughs> and yeah fun stuff but yeah it's a very simple event and there's not really much to it other than that it's just a lot of grinding I think that's the only thing about it is it's just a buttload of grinding like non-stop never-ending grinding it's the craziest grind fest in the entire game, I think. It's one of them up there. I guess, to be, to be fair, lotto events are pretty crazy grindy. But that's a selective grinding. You can choose to grind that much. This one is a completely different kind of beast. But anyway, that's the event itself. In terms of the story, I have no idea because I never keep up with any of the story stuff until it actually happens so I can experience it for myself the first time. But in terms... Oh, yeah, the event bonuses. I think there's not anything... Oh, well, funny enough, there isn't anything related to, like, usually in previous years you would have to collect specific metals, but it doesn't look like it's like that, so that's a nice change, I think. Uh, these are the two units that will be having an event. It is Karen, and it is Angramanyu, which if you do not know who Angramanyu is, he is the zero-star servant that exists in the free-to-play um, banner that is harder to get than any five-star. They get a bonus damage of 100% and bond bonus, which is pretty nice. And then servants with this also get a bonus of some kind. I guess the units you specifically give the... Hmm. You give the select one get a bonus of some kind? So if Valentine's present crash house is obtained through the lock-on Chaco or the surprise Chaco will help boost points. Then the super lock-on Chaco is a new addition to this year's Valentine's event. There are two types of super lock-on Chaco, strawberry and blueberry. Only one is available for each type. Super lock-on Chaco strawberry can be used to receive chocolate, while super lock-on Chaco blueberry... Queen can be used to give chocolate. 
the servant super lock on Chaco used will be a special skill sniped heartbeat during Valentine's event 2021. Increases damage by 50% and increases bond points gained by 30%. Important in case of servants to have both and give received chocolates, only one super lock on chocolate could be used on, on, on them. Either strawberry or blueberry is fine. That's pretty cool. That is definitely new. The event cards, there's white garden. Increased buster and quick cards by plus 8%. Increases MP damage by 5% and starts battle with uh, MP 50% char 30% charge. So when it's max and limit broken, chances are it will be 50% one. God's love points drop plus 30%. The event's uh, command codes is the moon goddess and love. Engraved cards deals 20% extra damage against male enemies. Lover's holy shroud. When attacking enemies using the engraved card, remove one defense debuff and recover 200 HP. And the blue witch's command seal. When engraved on an arts card, if the attacker uses the engraved card, remove one attack buff and one defense buff on the target. Oh, that's pretty nice. And then we go into the summoning campaign. This is going to be the way it looks. This is going to be very weird. <laughs> because when this banner came out, again, there was no pity on the JP side. So what ended up happening is, is that now that we have pity on NA, that changes how our banners work now. Because they can have a rotating banner when it doesn't matter if there's no pity. But now that there is, it's going to be a little bit more tough. So chances are there's just going to be banners. Oh, actually, no. She'll be on a permanent banner uh, rate up, and then these others will kind of switch off like on the day. Like Obviously, the next banner will have Altera, and then it will have Zong Zong on it. Uh, I can't cover every single one of these units, but it's good to kind of look at them and see which ones are important to you. And if there's any specific girl here that catches your eye, it's important to go for them if you want to. But I will remind you that, at least for now, it's good to kind of keep in mind that we are actually getting a... Uh, let me go to events. We are actually getting a Selectify this year, and it's coming from the six-year anniversary over here. Go... When is the anniversary, typically? No, that's a commemoration. Six anniversary. There we go. Other campaigns. So yeah, uh, these are going to be selected specific units that we will be able to get for free. I want to say yes. No strings attached. Special summon all players who clear a few key are eligible to obtain one SSR. I have a pool of thirty-two free of charge with no strings attached. And the redeemable servants are. Artera, Artoria, Mordred, and these are specifically ones that are on here as well as uh, that are on Raid Up. You have Orion, you have uh, Bradamante, you have Europa, you have Quetzalcoatl, you have Maeve, you have Drake, you have Tamamo, you have Shirazade, you have Zong Zong, you have Anastasia, you have Osaka Behime, you have Jack, you have... Um, Nightingale, you have Jean, you have Setonia, and then you also have Janako. And I want to say every single one of them is on here. Yeah, every single one of them is on here. So if there's any of those are specifically girls that you're looking forward to potentially getting and you want to try and get them, might just be better just wait for the five, <laughs> free 5 SSR. If you care that deeply about owning them, that you would be willing to risk summoning on a Valentine's Day banner, I would say just wait until the actual anniversary and just pick them up for free. But besides them, the units that are going to be on Raid Up are Altera, Songzong, Jack, Orion, um, The Lion King, Jean, Europa, Discuria, Discuria? I never know how to say their name. Then Bradamante, Anastasia, Maeve, Ahsoka Behime, Nightingale, Tamamo, Janako, Setonia, Toria, Mordred, Vietria, Drake. Shirazade and then Quetzalcoatl over here at the end. The rate of C is Cook's Heart Invincibility 2 hits, Buster 10%, Bitter Jewel 3% NP charge per turn, NP overcharge 100%, and then Dear Friend HP recovery rate up 5%, NP gain plus 50% when receiving damage. And finally, let's look at the actual unit, which is Karen, who is a ruler. Uh, she has two Quicks, two Arts, one Buster. She, as I said before, she is a ruler. Her first skill is the Holy Shroud of St. Valentine's. Grants self-invincibility for three attacks, three turns. Grants self-regeneration buff for three turns. Absorbs party MP gauge by 10% except for self uh, every turn. Um, the amount of MP drained on allies equal to the amount of MP charged by the skill's user. So par absorbs party's MP gauge by 10% except for self, obviously. Grants party invincibility for one attack, three turns except self. 
Increases party MP generation rate for three turns except for herself, and it's a 20% MP generation. Second skill is the Golden Arrow A, 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies by 300% for one turn. Charges on NP gauge, reduces all enemies NP gauge by one, reduces their attack by three turns, reduces their defense for three turns. 30% NP attack down and defense down is 20% at level 10. Third skill, Mana Burst Love A, increase on quick performance for three turns, increase on art performance for three turns, increase on bust performance for three turns, charges on NP gauge, reduces one enemy's... Um, NP gauge by 1 and then also charges her own gauge. Quick up, arts up, and buster up is 20% for 3 turns. And NP is also a 20% NP gain, all at level 10. Her passive skills are item construction A, increase on debuff resistance by 10%, independent action A, uh, masochistic spiritualistic disposition, 500% <laughs> chance to reduce on debuff resistance by 20%, treated as a buff, demerit. Increases on attack by 20% while self has buffs. Goddess Essence B and then Iron Will to Faith. Grant self terror debuff immunity. Grant self charm debuff immunity. And increases on buster resistance by 10%. Her third skill is a bonus against archers specifically. And her Noble Phantasm is a rank EX uh, quick. Which I think eventually gets strengthened up. But for us it's going to be like this at launch. Um, 5 hits, deals damage to all enemies, reduces their quick resistance by 20% for 3 turns, inflicts buff block status for 1 time 3 turns to them. Uh, level 1 damage is 600%, to level 5 at NP level 5 it's 1000. The increase to MP damage is only for 1 turn, and it's 10% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge it's 30%. And I think it eventually gets buffed to this, which deals damage to all enemies, gets a little bit of bonus in damage, and then also gets deals 150% extra damage against um, enemies with the chaotic, and everything else remains the same. And yeah, that's Karen. Um, I have a lot of rulers, and I don't have the most, the character that I like most from Hollow, um, Hollow, what? Fate, Grand Order, Hollow, ex I forget exactly what is the series that she comes from. But the one that um, I typically care about is Bazette, um, Bazet. So, not really the one I'm most looking forward to. So, I think what ends up going to happen for me is that I'm going to end up skipping. She is also a quick unit. I'm set up for quick, but I'm also just so used to um, arts at this point that it has to be one hell of a quick unit for me to actually want to use them. Um... Like, for example, Hogan that we most recently got, the Tengu. Um, she's a fantastic quick unit, and I've been using her on and off um, for when I want to uh, do stuff. But for the most part, it takes a lot. Her being a ruler also kind of makes it so it's a little bit weird because you don't really get a lot of bonus from that. So I'm not sure how good she actually ends up being. But it is Karen, and I know a lot of people like Karen, so they're going to be summoning for him. And for you, I wish you the best of luck. Good luck pulling on them, especially with uh, Kote Mine in the future. Maybe you just want to have both of them and you have a weird family reunion of priest on your hand. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. Not really for me, but it's okay. Not every single unit needs to be. And yeah, I wish you the best of luck as you summon for them. There's going to be no summon video for me. I'm going to be doing my damnedest to avoid summoning for Quetzalcoatl. And probably just going to be saving everything because, oh my god... I have to start thinking about saving for some future stuff in JP as well. I need to really focus in on saving for the Buster supports that are coming this year. Because <laughs> I'm going to be needing them in two years' time. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Tell me how you end up feeling about Karen. If you have a very... Do you want to make a case for her? I'll gladly listen to him. I'm not the most... Uh, for, for, oh my god, that was a lot. I thought I had exited out of email. Apologies, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm not the biggest expert on it. I haven't heard much about her, but if you have some positives to say about her, then gladly tell me so I can know for next time for when people ask, uh, or when people are wondering. But based off her kit, I don't really see her being anything amazing. Just kind of like a solid unit, I think, um, that might have trouble, uh, looping. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's really weird, because she gives MP game, but she gives it to everyone else. So, she needs it if she's going to be an AoE unit that's dealing a whole bunch of damage. Um, yeah, it's a little bit weird. But anyway, that's it for today's video, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to go work now. Bye-bye. Peace out.